You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 5. Right now, more evacuations are underway this morning in Hawaii after another crack in the Earth's crust opened up, putting nearby residents in danger. And roundabouts are becoming a way of life for us drivers here on the Sun Coast, where you can expect to see some big changes later on this week. And look at this, rain continues to move through our area. Just how long will it last? Good morning, the Sun Coast starts right now. Black Monday, May 14th. I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. A little rain over the weekend that continues this morning, but it's not all bad, though, John Scalzi. All those love bugs are now off our windshield. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good way to look at it. And you know what? Most of the weekend was okay. I mean, the, the rain's pretty much held off for Mother's Day for a lot of folks for a lot of the day. So that's good, and we need the rainfall, so we're glad to get it, of course. Uh, it did come down pretty heavily at times yesterday evening and into the uh, early evening, actually, and into the uh, overnight. And we have it ongoing now. And the thing is, it's here to stay for a while. It looks like we're going to have some fairly decent rainfall thanks to an area of low pressure developing down in the uh, eastern Gulf waters. In fact, that area right there is being monitored by the Hurricane Center for a two day chance at about 30% of developing some kind of tropical or maybe subtropical features and over a five day period, maybe a 40% chance. It's going to be very slow moving. It'll meander no to the north and as it does so it'll really pump moisture across the region now don't get too worried about that tropical possibility of any kind of development there even if it did develop uh, we're pretty much only going to see rainfall out of this one we're looking at uh, actually the potential of some pretty good rainfall with time perhaps as much as uh, as much as uh, four inches of rain over the period of the week ahead and right now we're getting Heavier rain off Gulf waters, but some moderate rain on shore. And yes, it will be a cloudy day today. We'll have that complete forecast for you coming up in a few on this first alert weather day. All right, let's take a peek outside right now, John. This is the uh, area of 14th Street at US 41. You can see off in the distance uh, some of the hotels toward the downtown. Well, this is where another roundabout will be going in shortly. You see some barrels out there right now. Yes, yeah, Sarasota, plenty of roundabouts. In fact, later in this half hour, we'll check in with Marla Spence about a roundabout that's supposed to open up this week at Ringling and Orange. Can't wait for that. Let's go to the maps right now. We'll find out that on Cortez, a little build up there as you approach 14th Street West, otherwise clear in Manatee County. Farther south, nothing right now in the red, just some build up along the bayfront as you head south past the Sailor and Nurse statue and head toward the uh, 301 41 uh, apex there. And then our final map to the south will show us the most red of the day so far. We'll see a 41 southbound as you head through Nokomis and Venice. Otherwise, uh, pretty clear at 5.03 on your Monday morning. Developing this morning, Sarasota police are looking for the shooter that left one victim in critical condition. Police say the shooting happened about 3 o'clock Sunday morning near the intersection of Martin Luther King Way and Pomodilia Avenue, about east of Ringling's College campus. Now, this is not the first shooting in recent uh, days there. Sunday's shooting is the fourth in the past week in Newtown. Police are not ruling out the possibility that they are connected. And another search is underway this morning. Sarasota police are looking for someone that they believe to be armed and dangerous after they robbed a grocery store at gunpoint. Now take a look at this. This is the security fit, the footage right here. Sarasota police say this man right here that you're seeing is wanted for the armed robbery of the Walmart neighborhood market on North Tamiami Trail, the one near Myrtle Street. Now witnesses say he went into the check cashing area of the store around 9 o'clock in the morning, armed with a gun and demanded cash. Now police do believe that he did get away with a large amount of money. If you have any information on this case, might be able to identify the man that you saw in that picture or on the shooting, you're asked to contact Sarasota Crime Stoppers at the number right there on your screen. That is 941-366-TIPS. Now onto new developments in Hawaii where an unexpected eruption from the Kilauea volcano forced officials to call for more evacuations there. A new opening in the Earth's surface is spewing steam and lava. It's causing noises like uh, popping and exploding for a mile away. The administrator for the Hawaii County Civil Defense says residents need to take this threat seriously. They should be making preparations, you know, even though not all of them are going to be under the threat of inundation, they are facing the threat of isolation. 
if the roadways are taken out. That crack in the Earth's surface measures about a thousand feet long. Well, the U.S. is opening a new embassy in Jerusalem today, and controversy surrounds two of the ministers scheduled to speak there. John Hagee was once accused of making anti-Semitic remarks, even though he founded the group Christians United for Israel. And then evangelical pastor Robert Jeffress once, accured, once accused President Barack Obama of, quote, paving the way for the Antichrist. Both ministers are supporters of President Trump. Now, Hagee is going to be delivering the benediction at today's ceremony, and Jeffress will lead a prayer. Well, roundabouts, whether you like them or not, they are becoming a way of life for drivers right here on the Sun Coast. And a new roundabout should open this week, finally, at Ringling and Orange in downtown Sarasota. Marla Spence is there live with exactly when the date might be, Marla. Good morning to you guys. Well, there is no exact date set for the opening of this roundabout, but Sarasota city officials say that it will be open sometime this week. Businesses and people who live in this area have been anticipating this opening for some time now. The intersection of Orange Avenue and Ringling Boulevard has been closed since November. The new one lane roundabout isn't the only thing that will be new out here. There will be upgrades like a new water line and also additional lighting for the road and sidewalks here on on orange and ringling. One Sarasota city spokesperson says the main reason for putting the roundabout at this intersection was to improve traffic flow and driver and pedestrian safety. One resident who spends six months out of the year in this area says he hopes the roundabout does just that. Well, time will tell whether it works or not. Um, I didn't really see the need for it and it's taken a long time to get this far. Uh, I just hope it works OK. And most of those final improvements were completed last week. They included the installation of signage, landscaping, and a foundation for public artwork that will be displayed in the center of that roundabout. That artwork is by a local artist named George Blanco, and his aluminum sculpture named Bravo will be installed sometime this summer. Um, coming up later on in the show, we're going to be telling you exactly how much did this roundabout cost, um, and we will keep you guys updated on when this roundabout will be opening this week. Reporting live in Sarasota, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. Right now, Sarasota County Schools looking to fill four key positions in its new police department. The district needs a police chief and three sergeants to form a command staff. The school board opted to employ its own police force to comply with the state-mandated Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Act, which requires a school resource officer in every school in Florida. For more information on these positions, go to our website, mysuncoast.com. Well, it was a meeting of a hero and survivors. The man who stopped a Tennessee Waffle House shooter met survivors of the shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. Over the weekend, James Shaw Jr. tweeted images of himself with survivors of February's mass school shooting in Parkland. Now, Shaw, of course, is the man who wrestled a gun away from the shooter who opened fire at a Nashville, Tennessee Waffle House. He met with David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez, who have become highly visible gun control activists. On Twitter, Gonzalez called her meeting with Shaw, quote, legendary. Hogg also tweeted a photo of himself posing with Shaw, saying, lots of work ahead, but the young people will win. Meantime, the half-brother of the Parkland suspected shooter, Nicholas Cruz, is on his way to a new life in Virginia now. 18-year-old Zachary Cruz had to get permission first from Broward County to uh, make the move. He's on six months probation for trespassing at the high school where his brother is accused of taking 17 lives. Cruz will still be subject to the probation restrictions he would face in Florida. Well, those three detainees released from North Korea last week, now home with their families this morning. Tony Kim, Kim Dong Chul, and Kim Hak Song have all left the Army Medical Facility where they were being evaluated and are now reunited with their families. They, of course, returned to the U.S. last Thursday morning, immediately went to Walter Reed Medical Center to make sure that they're in good health. The Pentagon released a statement saying the men were, quote, grateful, in good spirits, and coping well. Back in this area, happening today, a joint meeting of Sarasota County and the city of Northport to discuss some big issues in the South County region. The list includes the River Road Project, progress on the Atlanta Braves Spring Training Stadium, the North Greenway Trail, and the possibility of a new access point from I-75 starts today at 1 o'clock at the Robert L. Anderson Administration Center, which is on South Trail in Venice. 
Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast, a royal wedding now just days away. We'll take you inside the military preparations for Harry and Meghan's big day. So I raised, already got his outfit ready. Yes. And coming up a little later in the hour, a woman rescued by a selfless police officer. We're going to have the story behind this video. We'll tell you about it coming up. But first, let's take a look outside. A little bit wet start to the morning, but like we said, hey, you've got a lot of those love bugs stuck to the front of your car. This is like Mother Nature's free car wash. I'm hoping they were <laughs> strong enough to boil in the front of my car, but yeah, still seeing some drizzle right now out there, John. Absolutely right. In fact, it's going to be kind of a wet day today. Our first alert forecast calls for, well, it's going to be a first alert weather day, no doubt about it. 70 degrees, maybe to 80 degrees for a daytime high, and uh, 90% chance of showers throughout the day today. Your drive commute forecast, of course, calls for rain. It could be heavy at times today and in the afternoon. Showers and thunderstorms are possible. Low 70s and then near 80 on your way home. But watch for a few thunderstorms later in the afternoon. Your complete forecast comes up in a few. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7. John's trying to protect his school. He's trying to protect the kids and in this day and age and the heightened awareness that they had that day, how can it become a criminal charge? A Brookside Middle School teacher charged and placed on administrative leave for allegedly grabbing a student. Was he in the wrong? I'm Alan Cohn. We'll discuss. Meet me at the trapezoid. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard-sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park. Planning a Carnival Fantasy Cruise out of Mobile? Then check out the park and cruise packages at the luxurious Battle House and Renaissance Riverview Plaza Hotels. Stay at the Battle House for $169 per night or the Riverview Plaza for just $149 per night and leave your car for the duration of your cruise. Includes transportation to and from the cruise terminal. If you're cruising out of Mobile, come stay with us. Call 1-800-MARRIOTT or visit Marriott.com now. We've all heard how military veterans adjusting to the civilian world may have certain issues. 30. 70. If only everyone had this issue. No matter what challenge they face, Easter Seals is here for America's veterans. At Boys and Girls Clubs, it's not just about trying new things. Tanya, come here. Learning the right steps. Two, three, four. Or making contact. It's not just about exploring the future. It's about helping them build it. It's about making a connection. It's about proving every kid and teen who enters our doors has what it takes. Great futures start here. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So you look at the weather that we're going to have this week and compared to what we had last week, and it's just a world of difference. We have plenty of cloud cover in the forecast over the course of the seven days ahead. We have some pretty decent chances of total accumulation of rain to be significant. Four inches of rainfall possible by the end of the week. And the good news is that with all that, we are not looking at severe weather. We are not looking at flooding rains, though at times we could see some rains ponding on roadways. And uh, even if we get any tropical development, uh, we're not going to see anything around here that even hints at any kind of uh, real problems, doesn't look like. 
do have plenty of rain in the forecast for you, though, and that's not necessarily a bad thing in this dry month, so it's good to get that, especially with our drought indexes increasing. 90% chance of rain fall by 7 a.m. By noon, we're looking at probably about an 80% chance. We'll hold there until the evening when we'll trend it down a little bit after the sun begins to wane just a bit. With 76 degrees by 7 p.m., I think we have a chance at seeing some thunderstorms develop during the heat of the day as well as the showers that are ongoing at this time. Right now we're looking at 70 degrees. We've got plenty of cloud cover out there. We've got rain in spots, 70 degree dew point, so temperature dew point match 100%. Um, the kind of rainfall that we're having right now is the, the kind of stuff that uh, requires windshield wipers, but it's not blinding, pull off to the side of the road kind of rain. That's not what's in store for us. So clouds have increased across the forecast area, just as we thought they might have. And that deep plume of tropical moisture continues to lift northward in upper levels of the atmosphere, really bringing the potential for some uh, pretty good accumulations of rain over the week. We're watching carefully this area of low pressure that's beginning to develop in the uh, just to the north of Cuba, actually, to the uh, most western part of the tip of Cuba. The Hurricane Center, as I mentioned, gives that a chance, a slight chance of some kind of development with time. If it did develop, it would move northward up toward the panhandle. We don't get anything more than rain showers out of this. Even if it were to develop, our main impact is going to be the, the rain over the course of three or four days. Plus, it will be a little bit breezy today. Obviously, not a great day for boating, right? This little trough of low pressure lifts north. A low pressure area develops along it. Rain showers continue to pop up by these trigger mechanisms and lots of deep tropical moisture lifting northward. And we end up with a not exactly Chamber of Commerce kind of week, but needed rainfall. East wind at about 15 becomes southeast at 15 today. Boaters, moderate chop on bay and inland waters, obviously. Not a particularly good day for boating. Forecast looks like this. First alert weather day, we'll call it, because there could be periods today of some ponding of water on roadways. It's going to be kind of a, uh, a, a cloudy, rainy day throughout the day. We could get, we will get breaks in the clouds, but uh, breaks in the rains, but we'll also see rains intermittent throughout the day today. That's why I'm going with the first alert weather day. Uh, tomorrow, again, good chances of rain, 60% uh, chance. And then as we head into the next several days, we continue with good rain chances. By the time we get to the weekend, we'll still have rain chances, but it'll be more like the summertime showers that are produced by sea breezes on a sunny day. That kind of thing. Thank you guys. All right, thanks so much. Let's take a look outside your first alert traffic out there this morning. Starting off in Manatee County, those roads, as John mentioned, are a little bit wet this morning, so give yourself a couple extra minutes and make sure you slow down a little bit. Some wet roads out there in a couple spots. In Manatee County, not too much to see. Heading into Sarasota County again, not too much to see. No major delays going in this morning. A couple spots right there on University and Fruitville, but those are just our normal slowdowns. A little bit farther south in the area, if your commute takes you farther south towards the Port Charlotte area, your commute so far south Southbound on 75 and southbound on 41 are both decent this morning at 518. That is your first alert traffic. Well, more than 250 members of the armed forces are going to be performing ceremonial duties on Harry and Meghan's big day this weekend at the royal wedding. Among them will be members of the household cavalry that provide a mounted traveling escort for the procession, as well as state trumpeters performing fanfare during the service. CNN joined members of the household cavalry as they prepared for the wedding, including a few that serve with Harry in Afghanistan. <laughs> When Meghan Markle steps into St. George's Chapel, her arrival will be heralded by state trumpeters. I don't think we'll be seen. I think you'll all be looking at the dress rather than us, but um, you'll definitely hear it, yes. Trumpet major Matthew Screen sent recordings of several fanfares to the couple for them to select which one they wanted. It's um, a very poignant moment, if not the, the moment of the wedding, and um, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure involved. Given Prince Harry's military service, it's no surprise the household cavalry has been asked to play an important role on the day. Those who served alongside him in Afghanistan remember him fondly. On a personal level, humorous, bags of humor, which he seems to pull out the bag even when the chips are down, people are hungry and fed up and want to go home. He can still pull out a laugh. 
Some of his former service personnel will ride alongside the royal carriage, whilst others will line the steps of the chapel. I think it means everything to me and to my men, and I like to think it means a lot to him, uh, knowing full well that the soldiers on parade um, have either served with him of operations abroad or uh, have worked with him on training exercises. At the cavalry's barracks in central London, there's a buzz of excitement. As uniforms are cleaned and mended, jackboots are polished, the armoury is checked, and horses prepared for show. It's a routine they're used to, but this time the audience is global. And when it comes to Prince Harry's fiance, Meghan Markle, they're pretty excited about that too. A cracker, to be fair, a looker, very cool. Got that Yankee style. Yeah, well happy for him. No doubt Prince Harry agrees. Max Foster in London. All right, still to come on Good Morning oh. Suncoast, we'll have more details on the... Oh, you want to talk about the I royal wedding? You want to do your English accent first. I did. I suggested we talk in, a London, in our London accent uh, for all two hours of every show this week, right? Probably not. <laughs> You're like, bad idea, bad <laughs> idea. Still to come on Good Morning Suncoast, get your gaming fingers ready. The classic Nintendo edition is coming back again after selling out a few years ago. We're going to tell you when you can score your console straight ahead in Tech Bytes. And next half hour, new developments in Hawaii after another crack opened the ground. Amazing video there. First, this is a live shot out of Jerusalem. Religion, politics, and history colliding this week as the U.S. opens its new embassy in Jerusalem, away from Tel Aviv, causing protests among Palestinians. Much more on this story next half hour on Good Morning Sun Coast. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. It turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. My name is Haley. I have fragile X syndrome. I work with Tartwell's at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.employflorida.com. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work. And in times of triumph or tragedy, the Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. There was this big bruise on my friend's face. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to think her own nephew could have hit her. I didn't want to see it. My mother's bank account was emptied, and a caregiver had taken control of it. I didn't want to see it. My father's refrigerator, there was hardly anything in it. That's unusual for him. It's tough to see that a senior citizen is being abused, physically, emotionally, sexually, or financially. Elder abuse is a crime. So see the signs. Stop the crimes. A controversial video coming out of Miami has gone viral. A father arrested after officials say he was caught on camera hitting his daughter at school. The video shows school employees doing nothing to stop him at the time. Now the father, Raymond Emilio Rosario, is also a Miami-Dade police officer with a position at an airport. Now police say back in March, a teacher called to tell him that his 14-year-old daughter was being disrespectful at school. Now, after he arrived, surveillance video caught him slapping his daughter in the face, grabbing her by the hair and striking her with a belt. Eventually, employees reported the incident to the Florida Department of Children and Family Services. The police department suspended him with pay so far. And some good news this morning for us old school Nintendo fans. Get those gaming fingers ready. Nintendo has announced when the new NES Classic Edition is going to be available again after it sold out a few years ago. Here are today's Tech Bites. 
In today's Tech Bytes, Nintendo sets a date. The company says it will re-release its NES Classic Edition on June 29th. It comes with dozens of games, including Super Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong. Expect them to be sold and flying off shelves. Price tag, $80. And here's another release people have been waiting for. We showed you Boston Dynamics Spot Mini. It's that dog-like robot that walks itself, even opens doors. Well, now the company says the Spot Mini will go on sale next year. No word on a price. Amazon's popular assistant Alexa is apparently forcing new parents to make a change. Yeah, the number of parents naming their kids Alexa has dropped by 33% since the Amazon smart speaker hit the market. Now, records indicate the name hit its peak in popularity just before Amazon released the device back in 2015. Probably a lot of accidental orders. In yes, those when they're calling their kids. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites. Sponsored by Blue Buffalo. You know, I'm really particular about what my family eats. I check the ingredients on everything. Things like blue, yellow, and red dyes, not for this family. Same goes for this big guy. I don't want Chester eating synthetic colors. So when he's a good boy, I give him blue sizzlers, not bacon strips. While blue sizzlers and bacon strips are both healthy bacon-style dog treats, bacon strips contains red, blue, and yellow dyes that you won't find in sizzlers. Here you go, pal. Blue sizzlers made with real USA pork and no synthetic colors. What if your shark vacuum could clean almost anywhere, all on its own? The Shark Ion robot maneuvers from floors to carpets, while it spots trouble and steers around it. This shark cleans, docks, and charges automatically. The Shark Ion robot. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? Best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. That is a pretty good breakfast. You're not even eating. Not hungry. No? Why not? What's up? Uh, Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. My name is Stephen Jaffe. Uh, the law firm's name is Farmer Jaffe. One of the beautiful things about Julius is he's always smiling, and it becomes infectious. The fact that Julius has a disability has absolutely nothing to do with the quality of work that he's done. Just a, a great person you want on your staff. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. You now have the power to prioritize your Facebook feed and get local news and information from the team you trust. Go to the ABC7 Sarasota page on Facebook. Give us a like, then click following and choose see first. That's it. Customize even more by choosing notifications. Choose breaking news, posts, live videos, anything you want to see in real time. Take control of your newsfeed and stay connected to what's happening in your community with ABC7 on Facebook. Ever since I can remember, I've been intrigued by industrial design and the optimization. Wait, that's passion? Ever since I can remember, my passion has been industrial design. We need 3D printers for Miss Adams engineering program so that we are ready to solve 21st century challenges. Impressive. Think It Up is a new initiative to support student-powered, teacher-led learning projects. Students and teachers, how can you spark great learning experiences in your classroom today? Think It Up. Thank you. You got a king? It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. Find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Get 
breaking news, plus first alert weather and traffic focused on where you live. Watch Good Morning Suncoast on ABC7, weekday starting at 5. You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 5.30. More evacuations this morning as more danger approaches residents in Hawaii. A major intersection will finally reopen this week in downtown Sarasota. We'll have a live update from Orange and Ringling. And caught on camera, one woman thankful this morning for a police officer whose quick thinking saved her life. We have those stories and more right now on Good Morning Suncoast. It is 5.30 right now, a little overcast, a big chance of rain. Boy, Mother's Day was a, a washout in the, in the afternoon, rather. It was a little rainy, but if your mom needed a nap, then it was perfect napping weather. Did so. you? Yes. Okay, fine, I needed a nap, so that worked out really well. Welcome back, 5.30, I'm Ray Collins. And I'm Stephanie Webb. Thanks for joining us today. Speaking of that weather, is the rain going to continue today, Josh Kelsey? Yeah, it's going to continue for about five, six days, actually, off and on. It's not going to be uh, a complete and total rain all day long kind of a day, but uh, certainly will be periods throughout the day of showers and at times even potential of some thunderstorms could see some ponding of water on roadways for your drive home tonight. And that's why we're calling it a first alert weather day just because of the potential of those intermittent showers at almost any time throughout the day today. You can see the big swirl of showers lifting up from the south, moving across the peninsula at times fairly heavy. Again, we continue to monitor an area of low pressure down to the south, which the Hurricane Center has identified as having a 30% chance of tropical development over a two-day period and a 40% over a five-day period. That's not great. And at this time of year, these weak systems like this are notoriously difficult to forecast. So even if it did develop, I can tell you this much, it really wouldn't change things too much in our forecast. We'd still have these periods of rain and uh, not much more. The good news is this is beneficial rain. We need it. We got a little bit of a break going on right now in parts of Sarasota, parts of Venice, parts of Fort Myers near Arcadia and Wachula, but there's more rain on the way. Rain chance today, 90%. Forecast coming up in a few. All right, John, talk to you soon. Let's check some uh, traffic right now. First, a live look out at the uh, 41 14th Street area where there are plans for a roundabout. That's looking uh, southbound toward the uh, downtown area. Yeah, actually, that's Embassy Suites, uh, the new project there on the right-hand side at uh, Fruitville and 41. Let's uh, take a look now at some of the maps. First off, in Manatee County, some buildup there on uh, 64 in the westbound lane as you approach downtown Bradenton, otherwise clear in Manatee County. Farther south, all clear right now in the northern half outside of that little buildup along the bayfront. Some ongoing uh, paving work there going on overnight, so be aware of that around the uh, Sailor and Nurse statue. And then our final map to the south will indicate all clear right now at 532 on your Monday morning. Well, now to growing fears in Hawaii that another volcano eruption could happen any time. Officials ordering more evacuations this morning is yet another crack in the Earth's surface has opened. ABC's Janae Norman has the latest. Another crack opening in the ground. The 18th fissure in more than a week erupting on Hawaii's Big Island. Explosion is just pop, 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 pop. Things moving and... Um... In the bigger explosions, I've actually seen rocks fly over the tree line and I can feel in my body. The sound roaring as lava sizzles, bubbling upwards of 800 feet in the air, torching trees and stoking fears for people living nearby. Last week, it's almost like your life is on hold. It's not like it's a hurricane where you think, okay, in three days it'll be here and go or a forest fire. This is almost like a slow motion train wreck. More than three dozen buildings have already been destroyed. One of the biggest concerns now, that a major roadway could be cut off, potentially leaving residents stranded. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is there. And officials are worried about more cracks like this opening in one of the major roadways here, potentially stranding residents on the other side. Meanwhile, the threat of another kind of eruption looms. A massive steam explosion geologists say could happen any day with the potential to catapult enormous boulders and rain down ash for miles. If there is a steam explosion, the National Guard might have a bigger play dealing with evacuations, uh, dealing with security. It has a major impact in the area. And residents are also facing concerns over air quality. As many as 2,000 more people could be forced to evacuate because of lava emitting toxic fumes. Janae Norman, ABC News, Washington. 
Well, after seven long months, a new roundabout is set to open right here on the Sun Coast. Some drivers say yes, some drivers not so excited. Most people are looking forward to this new area opening up. Either way, let's go to Marla Spence live at downtown Sarasota's Ringling and Orange. Marla? Good morning, Ray and Stephanie. You know, this intersection behind me and roundabout may not look like it's ready for traffic, but don't be fooled. Looks can be deceiving. This week, a roundabout will be opening at Ringling Boulevard and Orange Avenue, and that will be happening this week. Now, people in this area are pretty much excited for the opening of that roundabout. This intersection has been closed since November. Uh, people have been waiting for uh, the roundabout to be open because they've been having to take detours in this area. One Sarasota City spokesperson says the reason for putting the roundabout at this intersection was to improve traffic flow and driver and pedestrian safety. Now, this is something that we've seen all across the Sun Coast with other roundabouts. Now, this roundabout doesn't come at a small price. It's costing $875,000, which was funded by a grant with the Florida Department of Transportation. Uh, so far, there is no word on an exact date on when this roundabout will be open. But once we find out more, we will keep you updated with the latest. Reporting live in Sarasota, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you so much, Marla. Well, some shocking video shows the moment a woman runs out of a Kansas restaurant on fire. Three people were hurt in the incident late on Friday, including the police officer who helped save the woman. Cameras catch a terrifying and heroic moment all at the same time at a local Mexican restaurant. Now, police say an officer was working in the area. He saw the woman running out, and as you can see from the church's video, the officer then runs over and tries to quickly pat her down. That's when police say the woman told the officer her sister was still inside. The officer then tried to get into the building, but the doors were locked. Now, police say that he did manage to break through the glass last front door and then save the other woman, her sister, using only his hands. Now, the woman with the church across the street said she was watching a movie when she heard some commotion. Our security tape, I could clearly see that the woman, the first woman, had come running out of the restaurant, just running, and she was completely on fire. Now, both of the women say in their eyes that officer is an angel and no words can explain how grateful they are for him saving their lives. Another big find by the Royal Australian Navy in the Arabian Sea. Here are some pictures they released. They seized packages containing, get this, 650 pounds of heroin. That equals about $88 million. It's their 11th seizure in the past seven months. So what do the drug agents do with all this heroin? It is thrown in the water and disposed of at sea. More than 44 million Americans have side jobs to take extra money in. With the rising cost of living on the Sun Coast, it's happening more and more often. New type jobs off cell phones. Sherry Clyburn works for an online grocery delivery service where she accepts orders on her smartphone. That is not her, obviously. The bigger the grocery list, the bigger the payout. She says there are a wide range of ages who pick up part-time work. But is it worth your time and effort? Tonight at 6, our Dwayne Linda takes a closer look at Suncoast side gigs. Well, a pair of cool shades helping police dogs in West Virginia do their jobs. The Bluefield Police Department started using these blue goggles for their canine units. You're going to see those in just a moment. Now, they usually cost, you can see them right there, they usually cost about $100 a piece, but the department received this pair as a donation. Now, police say the whole purpose is to protect their dogs in the line of duty. We're tracking a suspect, something like that. Uh, a lot of brush, they'll go through a lot of brush, different things. It protects their eyes from that. Now those officers are hoping to find more donors so they can buy more goggles for their other three canines. Still ahead, the fallout from a high school prom in Miami that included a caged tiger. We'll have one mother's reaction. And we are just days away from the royal wedding. We're going to show you just where the magic will happen and all the preparation that is still underway this morning. But first, a live shot from Jerusalem. Plenty, plenty of protests are expected this week by Palestinians who are not happy with the U.S. opening a new embassy in Jerusalem away from Tel Aviv. First daughter Ivanka and her husband are on hand for a ceremony. It opens today. Religion, politics, and history all colliding right now 
in the Mideast. All right, and back here on the Sun Coast, we've got a rainy day outside. How's it looking for the rest of the week there, John Scalzi? Yeah, that's so good. We're going to have rain showers, I think, off and on throughout the day today and for the next several days. Your school bus forecast doesn't look that great today. It'll be showery and possibly even thunderstorms in the afternoon, so that's not a particularly good thing during drop-off time to have. Lightning pops around, but certainly some showers this morning. Temperature of a 70. One out of 10 chance of an outside recess today, unfortunately. There'll be a daytime high. The top's out not much more than 80 and uh, wet. Complete forecast coming up in a few. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. If you're only hungry for a slice of apple pie, why buy the whole pie? And you certainly wouldn't want to pay for an all-you-can-eat buffet. So if you don't use your cell phone that much, why get charged for a plan that's too big or even an unlimited plan? Luckily, there's still a wireless company that shares your values. Welcome to Consumer Cellular. Our average customer pays about $25 a month for everything they need. Many pay even less as plans start at just $15 a month. You'll get a straightforward bill that's easy to understand with no surprises and all the attention you deserve from our friendly customer service team. No wonder Consumer Cellular has received the J.D. Power Award for highest customer service four times in a row. Plus, if you're an AARP member, you'll receive special discounts. It's easy to switch. You can even keep your phone and your number. So stop paying for more than you need and start your 30-day risk-free trial today. Call 800-457-2317, go online, or visit a Target store today. Since 2004, Embracing Our Differences has used the power of art and education to promote diversity. One way it accomplishes this is through its annual outdoor exhibition of 45 billboard-sized works of art, each accompanied by an inspirational quote. Join us in creating a community that is inclusive for all, where differences are embraced and individuality is celebrated. We invite you to celebrate the voices and visions of diversity and inclusion at this year's exhibit at Sarasota's Island Park. If you're looking for the perfect trip that allows you to spend quality time with the family, then discover the great outdoors on an Alabama Black Belt adventure. Create unforgettable memories while hunting, fishing, or biking and hiking or play the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail, now celebrating 25 years. And while you're here, enjoy the flavors of the Black Belt. Book your adventure at our lodges or stay in the Renaissance Montgomery Hotel and Spa. Start planning an Alabama Black Belt adventure today. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earn. For help, visit DAV.org. My name is Julius. I have cerebral palsy. I work for Farmer Jaffe Weising Law Firm. I do a lot of data entry and scanning documents. I want to increase my working experience to make the company much better. At the end of the day, it's good to think of the day's work and to think about what I have accomplished. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. We're calling it a First Alert weather day today just for the potential of some heavy rainfall at times, so maybe some thunderstorms this afternoon, and the fact that the rain chance today is going to be persistent throughout the day today. So if you had any outdoor plans, uh, you know, there'll be some periods where you might want to run some errands or so because the, the rain showers will let up a little bit, but those rain shower chances will be coming back uh, certainly not too long after you get a little bit of clearing around here. So that's going to be the nature of the game today. Rain showers, a little break. Rain showers, a little break. That's how it's going to be. 
77 uh, a.m. 90 percent chance of rainfall by noon, about an 80 percent chance, which will carry us right through the afternoon and with a little daytime eating within that 80 percent chance of showers, you might pop up a thunderstorm or two as well. And you could see some ponding of water on roadways a little bit later on today. 7 p.m. about a 60 percent chance of showers, lots of coverage of these rains across the peninsula. And in fact, some stronger cells over on the other coast. We're not really getting that around here so much, but we could in the afternoon see some stronger cells around. This one particular cell moving northward did trigger off a severe thunderstorm warning and the potential for tornadoes as well. Weak tornadoes. Don't think we really have that issue around here. Heavy rain at times, our primary weather threat today. If you if you look at the nature of these showers, it's all pretty light, really. This is in many cases just kind of intermittent wind shield wiper kind of rains, but we do have breaks in those showers as well. And down to the south uh, in Lee County, we have some heavier rains that are going to be lifting north. So areas around Punta Gorda and Northport over the course of the next hour or so, you may see a period of some briefly heavier rain showers around. 70 degrees, the air temperature, dew point a match, 100% relative humidity, a lot of cloud cover out there. We've had some good rain, some beneficial rains across the region. Becky and Omayaka picked up an inch of rain, and these rainfall totals indicate most of us didn't get quite that heavy a rain, less than one inch. But within that, there are pockets of some, well, some two-inch rainfalls down there around Inglewood. They had some pretty good rain there over the course of the last 24. Why are we getting all of this? Didn't get it last week. Well, because now we have a little area of low pressure that's spinning around here just north of Cuba. Sometimes you get that at this time of year, and the Hurricane Center is watching this area carefully for the potential of a 30 to 40 percent chance of development over the course of two to five days. Even if it did develop, its path would take it north up toward the panhandle, and our main impact from this would remain relatively unchanged. That is rainfall for about five days in a row. Needed rainfall, and some of it perhaps heavy at times. Don't really see the threat of severe weather, of course. We'll be watching that on a day-to-day -day basis simply because these low-pressure areas and Gulf waters at this time of year, really difficult to forecast. But one thing is clear, it will be lifting northward. Whether it develops or not, we'll be waiting and seeing and watching. Trough of low pressure in the upper atmosphere helping to produce these rain chances. So each and every day this week, we have at least a 50% chance of rainfall. Today, 90% chance of rain. We'll call it a first alert weather day. Watch for thunderstorms in the afternoon. 60% chance tomorrow and really each day this week, our rain chances are going to be pretty good, at least 50% through Thursday and total accumulations over that period, maybe four inches. And then as we head into the weekend, we'll see a little bit more sunshine and the kind of showers that we'll get will be, be more of those afternoon sea breeze kind of varieties. Back to you. All right, thanks, Don. Let's take a look outside to some wet roads in your first alert weather. Not too much going on in Manatee County. Some of those roads are still wet, so make sure you give yourself a couple extra minutes and take it slow on those roads out there this morning. Manatee County is still running pretty clear. Not too much to speak about there. 301 and State Road 70, about the normal. In Sarasota, both of those roads are pretty clear as well, too. Bee Ridge, University Parkway, and uh, Fruitville. None of those are really showing too much congestion around this time of the morning, so those are all running pretty clear. And if your commute is going to take you farther south, both 75 and 41, those are also running clear today. It is 547. That's your first alert traffic. A Miami mother was furious after learning there was a caged tiger at her daughter's high school prom this weekend. Reporter Ray Rom Ramos has the story. A caged tiger on display, perhaps one of the most memorable sights at a Saturday night prom for high school students. The exotic animal was rolled into the Doubletree Hotel Miami Airport and Convention Center for the event. The theme, Welcome to the Jungle. First of all, we're not teaching children empathy. And if there is no empathy and there is no consciousness, Parent Maria Castellano, whose daughter attended that prom, says she was concerned not only for the safety of the students, but for the tiger itself. That tiger was in distress. The reason he's pacing up and down and up and down with his tail going the way that it's going and his ears all folded back is showing you distress. 
In a written statement, a spokesperson for the high school says the tiger, which was displayed for a few minutes in a cage, was never harmed or in danger, was not forced to perform, was always accompanied by his handlers, and for the great majority of the time was laying down in a relaxed state facing away from the audience. Cell phone video posted online shows the tiger pacing in the cage as performers use fire to entertain the graduating class. These animals are not entertainment. More pictures show different animals also on scene, like birds used as centerpieces and a parrot, all provided by a facility they say is licensed by the FWC. The school says there was also a lemur, two macaws, and an African finnick fox at that event. Well, wedding fever is in the air. Across the pond, that is. The royal wedding is just five days away. Here is the view we're going to show you of Windsor Castle from the air. St. George's Chapel, located on the grounds of Windsor Castle, that's going to be the location of the much anticipated wedding between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Now, Windsor Castle is actually the oldest and the largest inhabited castle in the world, and it is an official residence of the Queen who actually spends a lot of her weekends there. Now, the wedding, of course, is going to be taking place this Saturday. It's expected to be watched by at least 25. 5 million around the world. And an American bishop was invited to give the address at the royal wedding. Kensington Palace announced in a tweet that head of the Episcopal Church, Reverend Michael Bruce Curry, is going to be part of the ceremony. Now, Curry became the Episcopal Church's first black leader when he was elected back in 2015. Traditionally, senior clergy from the Church of England give the addresses at royal weddings. The leader of the Church of England, who will officiate the wedding again this time, gave his blessing to have Curry as part of it. Now, of course, if you want to watch it all like Ray does, minute oh. by minute, Live coverage kicks off at 5 a.m. this Saturday morning right here on ABC7. It's going to be hosted by Robin Roberts and David Muir. Sit this one out, I think. <laughs> I think you might, too. There's a live picture of Jerusalem. The U.S. Embassy is moving today from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. This is causing a lot of concern among the Palestinians. They find it to be a slap in the face. Much more next hour on Good Morning Sun Coast. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always finish first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Who else has been taking your prescriptions? Keep your medicine and your family safe and secure. Mind your meds. To learn how we can help, visit the Partnership for Drug-Free Kids at drugfree.org. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. Here we get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no. oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Oh, yeah. Yes. So much fun. Yeah, Dad. Hi, I'm Janelle Hale, founder and CEO of the National Breast Cancer Foundation. No one should face breast cancer alone. When I was diagnosed 36 years ago, there was no internet, and I had to make a decision with little information. Early detection saved my life. It could save yours too. To learn what every woman needs to know about breast cancer, visit nbcf.org hope. I am the resident district manager on the FAU campus for Chartwell. Whenever I see Haley, I do not see a person with a disability. I see a person with extraordinary abilities. Haley is always smiling. She's always on time. She gives fantastic customer service and is always focused on any job that she's given. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to abilitieswork.employflorida.com. 
When ABC 7 declares a first alert weather day, it means we can expect major changes to weather conditions here along the Sun Coast. It means it could be severe, potentially dangerous weather ahead. We tell you when a first alert weather day is coming because we want you to be prepared. A first alert weather day is an advanced warning. We'll let you know about any changes in the weather when the first signs appear. ABC 7 first alert weather, we're here for you. If you're looking for a rewarding job you'll love, good news. The perfect job is just a click away. Go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day. It's that easy. Stop searching and go to mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to find the perfect job for you. Welcome back. It is 5.54, and here are some of the top stories that we've been following for you today on the Sun Coast. The search is on for an armed robber who held up a Walmart on North Trail near Newtown Sunday morning. It happened about 9 a.m. Plus, more evacuations in Hawaii this morning. Another big crack in the earth has opened up, and officials there are worried about more gas and lava headed to local neighborhoods. And the lightning led to one, then lost 6-2 last night. The Washington Capitals caps are now up two games to none. In the best of seven conference finals, game three is tomorrow night in Washington. And coming up in the next hour, it is expected to be a controversial day in the Middle East as a new U.S. embassy is expected to open in Jerusalem later on today. We're going to have more on that story coming up around 6.02. And more evacuations underway in Hawaii this morning. Growing concerns about that volcano erupting again. We'll tell you how residents are reacting. We've got that for you about 6.06 this morning. But first, and not one final look at the weather. Rainy start to the morning, right, John Scalzi? A rainy start to the work week, too. If you take a look at the future cast, the amount of rain that may fall over the course of the next couple of days, you can see in our area we're picking up close to three inches of rainfall. And as we head into the week ahead, it gets even, uh, even deeper with about four inches of rain possible in the rain bucket. So that's pretty good news. The bad news is it is going to be a soggy, wet day today. Have a good chance of seeing showers at almost any time, almost anywhere throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. We'll have that complete forecast in a few. Well, John, I have never looked more forward to a new roundabout or a new intersection reopening <laughs> because Orange and Ringling is a major spot in downtown Sarasota. And not getting through there for the past seven months for me has been a real challenge. All right, well, there's gonna be eight new roundabouts expected in the area over the next couple of years. So that's just one of many to keep that traffic moving. And speaking of moving, we will be back with more news for another hour. You're watching Good Morning Suncoast right here on ABC7.